Welcome to Calvary Bible Baptist Church. If you take your Bibles tonight and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, we'll learn about sound doctrine. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee before, the, uh, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. Let's open a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be Christians. Father, we thank you for your truth. We thank you for all we have and enjoy. Father, we pray that you'd bless this message, edify your saints. We pray for the saints around the world, those under persecution, to relieve their burden. Father, and those that are serving, to encourage them. And those that are out of the way and, and, and not following, but from a distance, that they'd get right and serve you and follow you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're looking at sound doctrine. Now, my personal opinion, after observation for several years, and even find it myself, I think the church has made itself mute. And it, it's not bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion, the Bible says. We're afraid to rebuke, and that's why we've got the mess we're in. We're, not, we're afraid to tell people where they're wrong. We're afraid to really preach the word and preach the truth. We've come up with this uh, toleration in the government, just to tolerate, tolerate. And we're tolerating all kinds of wickedness, all types of filth, and we are doing it at the expense of sound doctrine. And for me, I'm going to speak out and cry out and preach more than I ever have before. I'm really sick of it. Some of the things that have happened to me in the last month uh, with people's conduct, ungodly conduct, unholy conduct, and of course the church itself, sound doctrine. It's the substance of biblical truth. That's what sound doctrine is. It is the things of God which are revealed by the Holy Spirit of God. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. That's why the word of God is so important, because the spirit of God is in the word of God, and it's God's spirit. The words that I speak unto you, you said, they are spirit and they are truth. And we're not preaching and teaching the word, the whole counsel of God today. We're trying to appease people. We're trying to get them in with um, entertainment. And we can't compete with the entertainment world. We're crazy to try to com compete with them. They've got all the money and wealth. We should just be preaching the word of God, the truth of God, and let the chips fall where they may. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, get rid of it, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is judged of no man. I want to judge some things. I think America is degenerated. I think America has lost its place in the world. I think America is blind. I think America is going to hell. And anything short of a national revival, which I highly doubt, America is going to come under the judgment of God very soon. I hope it would come to revival, but it's not going to come to revival if preachers won't preach and they're afraid to lose people. Well, I'm preaching the truth, whether you like it or not. You want to get mad? It's a free country. Get mad. For me, I'm glad I got saved, and I'm glad that I have the Word of God. It's called truth as it's revealed by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is important. It's not your truth. It's not her truth. It's not his truth. It's God's truth. It's the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. God's word is the truth. Everything else that goes against it is a lie. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth will make you free from being bound by sin. The truth will will give you the freedom to have joy and peace and meekness and righteousness and the things and the fruits of the Spirit. And you know, the truth is, there's no joy in the church today. You go to churches today, and there may be people gathering, 
but I don't see the smile of joy in their face because they've given up the truth. And they should know the truth. And that's what we're to teach, sound doctrine. But the last days, they shall not endure sound doctrine. So they heap themselves teachers having itching ears. The truth stands in direct conflict with the precepts of men. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear, watch this, toward me, is taught by the precepts of men. What we don't need anymore is we don't need another devotional. We don't need another commentary. What we need is to read the word of God. What we need is to preach and teach the word of God. We keep going to men to learn the word of God rather than going to God to learn the word of God. You're supposed to learn the word of God by prayer and study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're not going to learn the word of God by going to commentaries and getting all kinds of psychology fed to you, the precepts of men, rather than the revelation of God. But that's what's going on. All the big preachers are writing this commentary and that commentary, and half of them are lost, the other half are blind, and America's going to hell because people have given up the truth, and we have a famine in the land of hearing the word of God. And that's the problem today. So we have the choice, the commandments of men and turning the fables of, uh, of the apostates or the word of God. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Apostasy. You know, the definition of apostasy. There's a, a false, wicked, heinous spirit in the body of Christ in the church today that saved, born-again Christians can't be apostates. And most of them are. And they think they're serving God. Apostasy is the abandonment of what one has professed. A total desertion or departure from one's faith or religion. It is a desertion from a party to which one has adhered. To which any say born again Christian will enter upon when rejecting sound doctrine. Now if I was to take the seven major denominations in America... There was a time when five of them were believing, preaching the book, and people were getting saved in those denominations. Only two of them were false, and now they're all false because they're not preaching and teaching the word of God anymore. They're handing out commentaries and fables and stories rather than truth. They've got your truth, her truth, his truth, anybody's truth, but God's truth, and there's only one truth. Thy word is truth. You cannot have sound doctrine without the word of God. The word of God is the sound doctrine. And so we're in an apostasy. Now, I want you to see this because it was his disciples. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them. And they had a problem over what he said. They misunderstood because of the darkness of their hearts, his words, and they would not walk with him no more because they weren't paying attention and they weren't listening to be approved unto the Father. Such disciples, we are to withdraw from. And the Lord directs your hearts into the love of God. Now, brother, sister, you ought to love God more than your wife, more than your children. Your wife ought to love God more than you, and your children ought to love God more than you, so you learn how to love each other rightly. We don't have a love of God in this nation or in the body of Christ. We have a love of self. We have a love of self-promotion. We have a love of being accepted. We don't have a love for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the Lord direct your hearts in the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name. Now what? That's a command. That's not an option. We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye would draw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the traditions which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. The Christians are conducting themselves in all manner of ungodly conduct today, 
and think they're spiritual and think God's blessing them, think they're serving God. And you've got Christians devouring Christians thinking they're doing God's service. Now, if the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall in the ditch, and the sound doctrine of the revelation of God's word is being neglected. The coupling of the faithful and the ungodly corrupts the godly. You, brother, you, sister, get away from these phony, charismatic Christians that are all intent on making you follow them rather than follow the words of truth. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And the shame goes to the pastors and the pulpits that have substituted philosophy for God's word, man's wisdom, for God's truth. See how many messages you get more than one or two scripture verses. Because they don't know the word of God, so they just speak out of their mind's imagination. They don't know sound doctrine. They don't know truth. <coughs> well, God's very clear. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You hang around with somebody filthy, you're going to be filthy. You hang around with somebody lewd, you're going to be lewd. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Shame on you. This is a clear teaching of the Old Testament and the New Testament. This saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with the skirt does touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered, said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered, said, It shall be unclean. You see, folks, this is us. We cannot transmit righteousness. We can only transmit unrighteousness. I have a cold. I have the flu. You want to stay away from me because I breathe on you and I would give you my sickness. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Be not deceived. If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall he be unclean? And the priest answered, said, it should be unclean. You get touched by an unclean person, you become unclean. It's that simple. Holiness. Holiness comes from God and his word alone. The words that I speak on you, they are spirit. They are truth. Truth purges and cleans and cleanses. The word of God is like a hammer. It breaks the rocks in pieces. The word of God is likened to many implements because of its effectiveness. The only thing that will change a man or change a woman is God's word. So evil communications corrupt good manners. You hang around with the filthy, you're going to become filthy. Come out and be a separate, saith the Lord. The order is simple. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Now, that shows what a rascal you are. You don't want to come to church. You don't want to hear the preaching of God's word because you don't want to be limited on doing evil. If you want to do well and learn to do well, church is the place where you ought to go. You do well to get there. Because church isn't going to tell you. I'm talking about Bible preaching, Bible teaching church. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not do things that are evil. That's what people don't want. Oh, you're being judgmental. No, you're to learn to do good and stop doing evil. And then, oh, I am pure. You're pure in your own eyes. You're not in God's eyes. We are as Christians, no less exhorted to purge ourselves, to separate from evil, and to become fit vessels for the Master's use. Being not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness in one No, no, it said unbelievers. It didn't say saved or lost. An apostate's an unbeliever. He may have been born again, but he's, he's moved away from God. He may have received the truth at one time, but he's not living for God today. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? They don't go together. And what concord has Christ with Baal? Two different individuals. You have God, the true God, and you got the false God. 
You got a God that is light and another God that pretends he's light. Or what part hath he that believeth when an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For he hath the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be a separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Why? You get dirty. If you touch an unclean thing, you touch a filthy thing, you go pick it up. That's one of the big things today. When you go around, we were just on our uh, honeymoon. We were on a vacation, and uh, they had these. They have them all over the place. They used to start them just in the hospitals. You squirt a little hand cleaner on you so that you get rid of the germs because everybody's getting everybody sick. They're passing off their sickness. Nobody's passing off health. Health comes from God. Either you has it or you don't has it. The sickness, everybody passes off. And the Lord challenged them to prove him. To see if they separate from evil. Those who are holy for him. How faithful is he going to be to them? From this day, the day of a true return to the Lord, followed by obedience separation, he said, I will bless you. Watch this. Hear the word of the Lord. Speak on you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. Amen. You know what Christians are learning today? They're learning the way of the heathen. They're learning the way of the world. They're doing everything according to the world. When they bring worldly music in the church, they're learning the world. You've got churches that call themselves God's churches that have motocross jumps uh, and, and people ride motorcycles to entertain people and all kinds of entertainment. You know what was wrong with Billy Graham, and I'll say it. Billy Graham used to preach a good gospel, and then Billy Graham started to bring in stars to build up the congregation to get people to come. And that was false. And that's what started sending America right down the drain. Him and every other Christian celebrity that did things like that. They used Hollywood to build up their membership and their attendance. It was fraud. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the sight of heaven. That's what the heathen does. They promote. Now, I've done some promotions in my time because I have promoted uh, lost activities and that's not saying they're all wrong. You just don't bring them into the house of God. I used to promote wrestling. I had 1,200 kids wrestling, 6,000 people in attendance. It took promotion to cause that to happen. But that isn't the way it is with the word of God. You preach it, you teach it, and then people either run from it or repent and get saved. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cut of the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold and fasten it with nails and with hammers and, move, and it moves not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is in them to do good. For as much as there is none like on thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great and mighty. Idolatry. People think they got an excuse to have idolatry. They call it age to worship. I'm looking for one of my little idols. There he is. I got a little idol here just to show you what an idol is. See that? that is a, that's a fraud. That's supposed to be a god or a saint or something like that. He cannot talk. He cannot walk. He can't do a thing. He can't do you harm. He can't do you good. He's nothing. I can turn him upside down and make his world go round and round. Now, if I wanted to, I could take him and smash him. I just can't afford it because this is my illustration. I'm going to buy a new one every time I show you the folly of idolatry. But that's America today. It's just full of idols, all the idols of the hands of man not worshiping God in spirit and truth. The Almighty is a jealous God, and his godly jealousy, he seeks true devotion, true worship, not will worship. Which things, will worship, we'll cover this, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Now, I'm going to grant you as a Christian, you ought to crucify the flesh. I, I do that. I recommend that. But the ascetic appears to be a man or a woman of God, but they have simply exerted willpower over the flesh, and it's uh, maintaining his or her separation by willpower, not by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is the thing that's so deceptive, because some people will, in willpower, well, I won't smoke anymore, and I won't drink anymore. And that's good if, to not do those things, but... I quit smoking because I love the Lord and I wanted to be a testimony for him. I quit drinking because I love the Lord and my Bible told me it was not for kings to drink, O oh, Emmanuel. See, it's a matter of whether you do it out of your will to make yourself self-righteous 
in the eyes of other people, or you do it to please the Lord. It's kind of hard for anybody to judge it, but God can. God knows the heart. He looks on the heart. I know the difference. I just can't prove it. Some people are clean because they love the Lord. Some people are clean because they love themselves. There's a difference. And, of course, those that are clean that love themselves aren't really clean. They're just deceived. Because, you see, when you love the Lord, you're going to love all good. And you're going to abhor all evil. You're not going to be selective. When you love yourself, you're just going to select the things you don't want in your life and entertain the rest. That's why we're called hypocrites. To the satisfying of the flesh. Now, if you're walking in the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is always sacrificial. Lust is always taking. Real simple. Joy. Joy is that inner joy that cannot be affected by other circumstances. Joy is something you have in adversity. It's a spiritual gift from God for those that are walking in the Spirit with God. Peace. You get peace when you make peace with God. Then you'll have peace within. Long-suffering. When you start seeing yourself as you are like the best example I can give you I drive down the road and I don't get road rage anymore because I see all the bad terrible poor drivers and I look at them and say oh that's disgusting they drove just like I used to so I give them a little time cut them a little slack unless they run me off the road gentleness David said thy gentleness has made me great. You know, God doesn't force anybody to do anything. He just says, you can repent and be saved, or you can die and go to hell. You make your choice. He won't force you to get saved. He'll die for you. Goodness. Goodness is giving good to people, not evil. Every good gift cometh down the Father of lights. Faith. Faith is believing God's word, receiving his truth. Meekness. Temperance against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections. See the affections and lust. Years ago, um, the Lord dealt with me to quit drinking, as I told you, and I gave up alcohol because I loved the Lord. And so I had some fellows I was working with, and they thought that I had just been a self-righteous person that laid the law down on myself and and forced my flesh to give it up. So they said, we're going to break you. And so we went out to dinner because we had to go to school. And we went out to dinner. And they bought every drink that the bar had to make. And they put them all on the table with me while I was eating my dinner. And you know what they did? They just wasted all their money. So why is that? Because I didn't quit drinking out of self-will. I quit drinking out of love for God and the revelation that I was drinking animal urine polluting myself. Now, the natural man receiveth not the things of God. And I preach that. Natural man, <laughs> hey, buddy, you're drinking urine from the little creatures. They gobble up the yeast and go, pop, 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 and that's what you drink, and it drives you insane. You fool. No, well, that's not really nice. You're really crazy. You fool. That's why you beat your wife. You end up in, in, in jail. You get yourself hurt. You kill people on the highway. Drunkards don't do good for anybody. They hurt people. You want the truth? The whole truth? Nothing but that's the truth. Drunkards hurt people. They're not nice little old people. They're the ones that violate little kids. Drunkards and dopers. You say, well, you got no love. Repent. There's a lot of love for a repented doper and a repentant loser. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit there, let us also walk in the Spirit. Yeah, a few things in my life I had to crucify the flesh to get rid of, but it's learning to love Christ that keeps it going. Walking in the Spirit is the solution. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. See, when you do things in the flesh, then you're looking for the praise and acceptance of men. You're looking for somebody to say, hey, you're a good person. When you do it for God out of love, you don't care what anybody else thinks. You just do what's 
God would have you to do because you love him. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Where the body is neglected, abused, lacerated, punished, denied, and controlled by the will, the will power, will worshiper image, he is making his progress in his eyes. This displays that the will worshiper wisdom and it appears that they are great saints and holy ones. However, all that they have to do, all that they have done is to magnify their own ability to control themselves rather than to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Hello. So you quit this and you quit that because you got power to control yourself. That's good. But did you do it or the Holy Spirit do it? See, did you do it out of love for Jesus? Did you do it out of love for God? Did you do it out of love for righteousness? Then you wouldn't be consumed with envy and, and pride and uh, you wouldn't look for people to applaud you. You'd just do the right thing because it's right to do because you want to please your Savior. You wouldn't need acceptance of it. That's why a lot of people are becoming so immoral today is because nobody will accept morality very much anymore. Uh, the whole emphasis is on this toleration. We're going to tolerate all the wickedness of men. And it's an alternate lifestyle when it's a perversion from the creator's creation. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Sodomy. There are no such thing as gay people. There's sodomites and queers. You take your pick. They call themselves queers. God calls them sodomites. And no, I don't have any of your kind of love. It's immorality. It's not love. It's called lust. L-U-S-T. Where the body is neglected, abused, and lacerated, it isn't love of Christ. Because thy gentleness has made me great. You see, when a man falls in love with Jesus, when a man falls in love with God, he just does the things that pleases and the sins fall away. He does it for the Lord. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. The Bible says, Thou shalt do no murder. And they crucified, Thou shalt not bear false witness. They had to lie about the Lord in order to crucify the Lord. And when they crucified him in a lie and falsely accused him, they became murderers. Because the only justification to take a life is to defend your own life. Self-defense. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, notice the people biting are the ones that don't have the Holy Ghost. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Stephen prayed for them as persecutors. Say, what's that? He didn't care about their wickedness. He cared about pleasing his Lord. He wasn't a will worshiper. He was a surrendered saint. That's the difference. A will worshiper is doing it to impress others. A surrendered saint is doing it to please God. When a man refuses to taste beer, and he should, and to touch cigarettes, and he should, and to handle the flesh, and he should, he gets the immediate impression that he's growing in grace and becoming holy, and that's not true. There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end, therefore, are the ways of death. No matter what you quit handling, tasting, touching, you cannot grow in grace if you are growing in self-will rather than his own will. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel from heaven strengthening him. Now I want you to see this. Because nobody's preaching or teaching this. Notice that God's will is prayed for. 
and is accomplished by surrender and it has a supernatural strength to it. And he was withdrawing them about stones cast and kneeled down and prayed. He prayed. Notice he did not want to do the Lord's will because it meant his death in the flesh. And so he said, if it be willing, if thou be willing. See, he asked, is it okay with you? Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Then an angel appeared unto him from heaven, strengthened him. You want to be holy? You want to walk in the spirit? You want to be cleansed by God? Let me do this again. It comes from prayer, accomplished by surrender, and by a supernatural strengthening, not self will. Here we go. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. You see, the strengthening comes from the spirit within that has been prayed for. And the flesh has surrendered to it. Not by will worship. Not by your own predeterminated strength. I'm just going to do this. No, by saying, Lord, not my will, but thy will. In fact, in fact, self-will determines every act of sin committed by anyone. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, watch it, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Every bit that's will worship. That's the devil and the devil worships in the will. I will be like the most high. I will, I will, I will. How about not your will, but God's will be done. Yet thou should be brought, thou should be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Including the first sin committed by men. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. For the fruit of the tree which in the midst of the garden God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh-oh. A problem. God didn't. See, see how we get in the sharing, caring camp of apostasy? God never said, lest ye die. God said, Ye shall surely die. It was a twisting of what God said went from ye shall surely die lest ye die with a doubt and maybe. Well, I'll tell you what, we're all dying, aren't we? Somebody got something wrong. Will worship. What is missed here is that the first sin came through a man and a woman that became lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. And boy, are the saints in love with themselves today. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Oh boy, God's bad, devil's good. That's what they're per perpetrating on the planet today. Okay, it's okay to be a criminal. It's okay, oh, the poor little criminal. Poor little criminal. You know what God said in the Old Testament? Thy eyes shall not pity him. Oh, the poor little... Everybody's worried about the poor little criminal. How about the poor victim? Who we on you? Oh, the poor little doper. Oh, the poor little bank robber. Oh, the poor little police killer. I call them all sinners that are in deep need of.
of repentance and salvation and regeneration. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desired to make one wise. And she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave it also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. What a fool. His wife takes off, talks to another party, gets corrupted, and then he goes along with her to the party that corrupted her. Boy, Adam messed it up big time. And the eyes of them were both open, and they knew they were naked. Oh, my God, they come to the realization they didn't have any clothes on. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. There it is, will worship. You see the fig leaves? That's will worship. Uh-oh, we're naked. Uh-oh, we're going to get discovered. Uh-oh, we better put some fig leaves on and cover us up before God comes and see us. Will worship. That's what it is, all the self-righteousness of man. Body, your self-righteousness is no good. God is not, your fig leaves are not going to impress God. It's prayer, surrender, and God's will. Otherwise, you're in will worship. Now, here's the lesson. A man or woman that is in love with themselves are completely capable of committing any sin. This no awesome, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. You know who you need to turn away from? Adam and Eve. Say, why is it? Because she loved pleasure more than she loved God. Hello. She was a will worshiper with her husband who followed her in will worship. That's why the man is supposed to lead the woman and not the woman lead the man. Oh, you get mad as you want. I know you got your ERA. ERA today. Tragedy tomorrow. I don't see the divorce rate going down. Do you realize how much hurting and all that flesh there is and the, the marring of the children? Uh, we're training a bunch of retarded, ability-capable children from broken homes. They can't function, feed themselves, take care of themselves. Why do you think the country's going bankrupt? Get mad at me all you want. The truth hurts, doesn't it? And, of course, Satan's continuing his argument. Look at here. The Lord said unto Satan, As I have considered my servant Job, there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast, look at that, his integrity, although thou movest me against him, destroy him without cause. Now that was Job's problem. You want to know why the righteous suffer? You want to know why the righteous suffer? Because it's self-righteousness in will worship rather than grace. You see, Job was the most righteous man that lived, but he was trusting his own righteousness, and God wouldn't have it, even from Job. And Satan, oh, you want to see this dude? And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, all a man hath will he give for his life. The devil knows this. He says he, he can bring pressure to bear. He can get you to do anything at the right time, right place. Because you'll give everything you got to save you. He puts the pressure. You got these people in will worship. Oh, I got integrity. I won't break. I won't break. You'll break. They all break. They all fall. There isn't a man that stood. The only one that ever got victory over the devil was the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody else he took out. He took them all out in the first round. On earth is not as equal. Arm with cruel hate. But oh, why believe the Bible? He took Noah out. He took Moses out. He took David out. He took Daniel out. He took the prophets out. He took Elijah out. And he said, oh, he ain't going to take me out. He already took you out. Because you think that way. You're not resting in God's strength. You're not resting in God's word. You haven't surrendered. You're in self-will, and he already whipped you. Hmm. 
in the history of mankind has proven the accuser of the brethren to be proficient. And I heard a loud voice, right? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren was cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. You don't want to serve that fellow. You think the devil's cool. The devil's talking to God and telling God what a wretch you are and what a loser you are and what a bum you are, which is all true. But he says, you ain't worth saving, which is not true because God loves you and he's not willing that you or anybody perish because God is good and it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance, but it's the hardness of thy impenitent heart that's going to send you to hell because you're going to trust in your own self-righteousness. You think you're good enough for God and you're not. You think you will do it. I will ascend into heaven. I will be like. You think you can make yourself like God. You can't make yourself like God. You can surrender to God. You can give it up and just surrender. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. That, that will change you. We need to be absolutely correct here. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So you know what's right and wrong? Well, that just means you know what's right and wrong. That doesn't mean you're doing right or wrong. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all of them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, you know what God wants you to do? He wants you to surrender to his will and his righteousness, and when you fail, his grace will be sufficient. That's how you'll have eternal life, and that's how you'll have eternal security. When Jesus paid the penalty for all your sins, and then you walk after Jesus trying to be like him because you love him and you worship him. Now, I'll show you how it works. I, I had a relative once, and he had, he had a celebrity that he worshipped. And you see a lot of it in this celebrity worship. You know who Elvis is. And you see all these Elvis impersonators. See? And so they walk like Elvis, they talk like Elvis, and they all shook up like Elvis. Well, that's man worship. What you're supposed to worship is God. A man that worships God takes on the form of God. He, when a man worships God, well, if Jesus did it this way, I want to do it this way. If Jesus did it that way, then I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus. I'm going to study the scriptures and get to know Jesus. That's worshiping in love. That's identifying with the Savior. So I want to be just like you. We got a song. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. That. That's walking in the spirit. That's not will worship. The world is filled with self-willed, self-righteous men who are accepted as spiritual giants, and they're not. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And ourselves your servants. See the surrender? Servitude. Speak, Lord. Thy servant hear it. The self-righteous are smoke in God's nostrils. I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. See, I, well, they think this is right, they think this is good, they think this is so. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifices in garden and burneth incense upon the altars of brick. They are religious, they are a show, they got fancy clothes, they're making sacrifices, they're burning incense, whoa, which remain among the graves, but they're, they're, they're among the graves, and lodge in the monuments and eat swine's flesh, polluted food. The broth of abominable things is in their vessels. And this is what they say, which they stand by thyself, come not near to me. 
because I'm holier than thou. Neither a smoke in my nose, a fire that burns all day. Self-righteous, self-willed people are smoke to God. You really want to be a smoke in God's nose? Make yourself clean in your own eyes with your own self-righteousness. I don't care whether you're saved or lost. If you're saved, you're an apostate if you do that. Because you were saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The self righteous simply do not know at which they stumble. So, why is that? The way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. They think they're cool when they're a fool. They do not believe the revelation of God. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteous. You see, a man that's walking the Spirit is going to be speaking about God's word. They do not believe they will go to hell if they reject God's revelation. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. You've got all kinds of religious groups that are no hellers. They don't believe in hell. Jesus Christ did. That whole Bible does. God believes in hell. Jesus said, cut your eye out, pull your eye out before you go to hell. That's how serious it is. They do not believe what God said about human nature. The Lord make me to know my end in the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. They ain't fools. They think they're strong. I, I, I'm a self-willed man. I, mind over matter. I got things under control. The devil will play you like a fiddle. Behold, thou hast my days as a hand's breath, and my age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. God says that the best man on the planet is empty. Selah. Pause. Meditate. Second advent. Judgment. Surely every man walketh in vain. Show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. See, the, the, that's people with their self-righteousness, a vain show. Look at me. I'm somebody. I'm something. I'm good. I'm okay, preacher. I'm okay. You're going to hell. You're going to hell because you think you're okay. And that Bible says you at your best state is vanity. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You're going to burn. If you don't turn, you're going to hell. You get mad at me all you want. You can call me a phony and a freak all you want. I am resolved to preach the truth. I don't care how you think or feel about it. I am submitted myself to God. He said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions. I'm just an ambassador. I got, I'll got i be honest with you, I got some self-righteousness in me, and it stinks. The only thing that's ever good is only that which I've done for Christ. That's all that will last, and that's when I say, speak, Lord, thy servant here. Surely every man walketh in vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. My hope is in thee. They do not judge themselves the way God told them to. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. No, they see themselves as wonderful. And they just preach love, love, love. Love, love, love. They don't even know what love is. They love, 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 and they're fornicating with one another. Love, love, love. They're stealing with one another. Love. They are blind leaders of the blind. Love is sacrifice. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I am the good shepherd, and I give my life for the sheep. That's love. Don't tell me you're a lover when you're a taker and a heartbreaker. You're a devil. It's more blessed to give than to receive. The word of God. They do not trust the grace of God for salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm going to heaven not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. I accepted the free gift. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by his grace. They will not abandon their own self-righteousness. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. 
You want to know if a man is surrendered? If he's surrendered, he'll be faithful. See, because if he hasn't surrendered, he won't be able to take the heat. He'll have to get out of the kitchen. But if he surrendered, not my will, but thy will be If he surrendered, he'll stand. That's what you're exhorted. Having done all the stand, stand therefore. But the only way you're going to stand is to be surrendered. Because you ain't surrendered. Somebody's going to hurt your feelings. Or somebody's going to frighten you. Or somebody's going to scare you. Or somebody's going to intimidate you. And you're going to go with the crowd rather than walk with God. They are not born again or regenerated. In most cases. Now, apostate Christian, act like this. Marvel not, thy son, thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it lists, thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth, so is every one who is born of the Spirit. They are not spiritually circumcised, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made with our hands, and putting off of the body the sins of the flesh and the circumcision of Christ. You must be born again. It's a supernatural birth that comes from God. You can't will yourself into heaven by will worship. You can't make Jesus your friend except you repent. Repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to stop believing a lie. You've got to stop believing false doctrine. You've got to stop believing unbelief and turn to the truth of God's word and the truth of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for your salvation. They are not in Christ or in the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. They do not believe in the blood atonement for redemption of sins. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish without spot. See, I got saved by the blood of Christ, what he did. I didn't get saved by doing something good. I didn't get saved by will worship and getting to be a better person. I got saved by realizing I wasn't fit and I was lost and I don't know the hell. And I cried out for God to save me. They teach the body of Christ to trust in the flesh contrary to sound doctrine. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Now watch. Here's a man that had the pedigree circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law of blameless. But what things? See, all that stuff, that self-will, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Paul said his self-righteousness was crap. Throw that on the brother. Oh my God, he said crap. That's what your self-righteousness is. It's crap. You don't like it? You're crap. Get mad all you want. You'll find out when your crap hits the lake of fire. You're under a curse. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man, that maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. God's word and doctrine are much different than the precepts of men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princesses. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Mm -mm. we got our heralds. I don't have any. I've got one Lord and Savior. You can have your heralds. I am not a respecter of persons. You say, what's that? I think all flesh, including myself, is grass. All self-righteousness is bullcrap. You ain't nobody. In fact, you won't really get saved till you realize you're nobody. 
and he needs somebody to save him. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Remember a fellow named Samson? He told his sweetheart where his strength was that God had given him. You know what she did? She sold him out. Mm, mm, mm. Quite a world, isn't it? God have mercy on you. God loves you. I gave you the truth. You don't want the truth? Damnation's coming. You can have the fire. You want the truth? You can have forgiveness and mercy and grace. You can walk in the Spirit. Your choice. You choose. Choose wisely.